Hello and welcome to my video on MIDI and sync. So I've noticed there seems to be quite a lot of confusion around about the function of the MIDI ports, both DIN and TRS, of analog sync ports and various syncing standards. So what I'm trying to do today is discuss all of those port types and exactly how they convey sync and their relative compatibility with one another. So what I'd like to talk about first is MIDI. So first of all, what is MIDI? Well, MIDI stands for <laughs> Musical Instrument Digital Interface. What does that mean? Well, firstly, it's a protocol designed for transmitting musical information. Things like notes on, notes off, note velocity, aftertouch, uh, CCs and so on. Over what type of port is it transmitted? Well, conventionally it's transmitted over a 5-pin DIN port and it is a serial or UART protocol. So that means it's a digital protocol, therefore it requires a microcontroller in the device to actually utilize it. Traditionally it was only transmitted over these 5-pin DIN ports, but other types of ports were introduced. So first, let me tell you about the ports you'll probably see on your device and what they do. A device with MIDI will usually have a MIDI in port. This is where it receives MIDI messages. So that's a hint. MIDI is a one directional protocol. A single MIDI cable does not both transmit and receive. A single MIDI cable only transmits from the perspective of one device and only receives from the perspective of the other. So if we want communication to go two-way, we need two cables to be connected. The MIDI out port is where MIDI information is transmitted out of a device. The MIDI through port is a special port to allow MIDI devices to be daisy chains. What does daisy chaining mean? Well, it means a single output from something like a controller can be passed from one device to the next to the next. So all a device does is echo whatever it received on the in port to the through port. In contrast, the out port transmits whatever in MIDI information the device itself is generating. So typically these are not merged. Uh, it's relatively uncommon for them to be merged. A small number of devices do support that. So therefore, to control a keyboard via MIDI, from a controller, you will go from the MIDI out on the controller to the middle MIDI in on the device. Well, when daisy chaining, how does this work? We've now got more than one synth. How do we communicate with one or other? Well, MIDI has a concept called channel. Now, this is pretty misunderstood. Channel in MIDI terms is nothing more than a piece of information attached to the message that is being sent. So in other words, if I say turn a note on on the device on MIDI channel 5, all of the devices in the MIDI chain that is in to through to in to through to in to through, all the devices on that chain will receive all of the messages and it's down to them to ignore the messages that are not tagged as being for the channel that they operate on. Additionally, some MIDI messages are global. What that means is there is no channel written on them and therefore all devices in the chain listen to them. What would such a message be? Well, one such message will be synchronization messages. So the way synchronization is conveyed over MIDI is called MIDI beats. And these occur at a certain frequency, which I will describe when I talk about synchronization. But for now, I just want to make it clear that MIDI is a digital protocol and MIDI has inputs, outputs and throughputs because it is not bidirectional. Another thing that I should really bring up is USB MIDI. So traditionally, there are two types of USB ports. One of them, like you have on your computer, looks like this. It's called a USB-A port. The other one that you might see on something like a printer, the connector looks like this. And this is called a USB-B. Well, why do they look different? The reason they look different is because MIDI 
as um, because USB as a protocol and standard has a concept of what's called a host and a client. So the idea is that clients register with the host and then they can communicate. Traditionally, the host would be a computer and every other device would be a client. You may have a hub in between to route more than one of them through, but that's the logical distinction. So functionally, a host and a client behave in completely different ways to one another, but they negotiate and they set up a transit. So USB MIDI has to be carried out between a client's device and a host device. It's worth knowing that almost all synthesizers, if they have USB MIDI, they will only be USB clients and not USB hosts. The same is true of controllers that have USB outputs. They are not going to be a host device, they are going to be a client device. So in order to have a controller with USB MIDI speak to a synth with USB MIDI, they will both need to be connected to the same host. This host might be a computer, it might be a host box, it might be something else. But ordinarily these can't be connected together. But why do we call that USB MIDI? Well, the data that would have been transmitted over these DIN ports that I described gets encapsulated in the USB protocol and conveyed. So in other words, the underlying data is just the same as comes out of the traditional DIN MIDI ports. When I say DIN, I'm referring to a connector that looks something like this. So there are five pins in there. It's worth being aware as well that the MIDI protocol actually only requires three of these pins be connected. The way that it's connected is one of them is connected to ground, usually to chassis ground. Sometimes it's connected to shielding in the cable. And the other two connectors are called the current source and a current sink. MIDI DIN and MIDI conveyed any way other than USB MIDI is what's called galvanically isolated. What does that mean? Well, it means that there is no direct electrical connection between the two devices that you plug into one another. Well, why is that important? That means that noise cannot be transmitted between the devices by means of that cable. So how's that galvanic isolation actually manifest? Well, on an output port, the current source is going to be a fixed voltage line, say five volts. The current sink is going to move between five volts and zero volts, and that's how the digital data is transmitted. When the current sink is five volts and the source is five volts, there's no potential difference, so no potential flows. When one is five volts and one is zero volts, then current flows. On the receiving end, that's the input side, there's a thing called an optocoupler. It's a chip, and inside it is an LED, and next to the LED is a device which is usually a light sensitive transistor. So depending on the state of the LED, the, transmit, the transistor will or will not allow current to flow through it. So effectively, this optocoupling means there is no electrical connection between the digital part of the receiving synth and the transmitting synth. So that's why you might care about um, DIN MIDI. So you may note that in addition to the in, out, through, I've um, displayed two smaller port types here. This is because I want to illustrate another type of MIDI port that you may see on your devices. This is commonly called TRS MIDI. So I'd like to introduce what I mean when I say TRS. So let me grab a cable. They're normally um, three and a half millimeter cables. So when you look at the connector, you may notice that there is this black divide and there is a piece of metal here and a piece of metal here. So these are actually electrically isolated from one another, 
and they connect to two wires inside the cable. So we would say this cable has two conductors in it. One of them connected to this, one of them connected to this. What do we call these parts of the connector? We call this the tip and we call this the sleeve. So this is a two conductor cable and this is a tip sleeve jack. The next type and the type that is going to be in use here is note three pieces of metal and two plastic dividers here. So in the cable there are three conductors, three wires connected to these three things. We call these things the tip, the ring and the sleeve, TRS. So commonly um, the TS cable that I showed is sometimes called mono. Why is that? Typically the sleeve is ground potential and the tip some signal goes down there. Now the signal in audio terms, if there's only one signal, it's one channel of audio. So this might be used to convey monophonic audio. TRS, we have a tip, a ring, and a sleeve. Often the sleeve is ground, the tip is the left audio channel, and the ring is the right audio channel. So sometimes this is called a stereo connector. In the context of a MIDI, it makes more sense to call this TRS. Just for completeness, I'm going to show you the other type of um, cable you'll sometimes see. This jack is called a TRRS, tip, ring, ring, sleeve. So conventionally what happens with this type of connector is the tip is the left channel, the ring is the right channel, the, the second ring is the ground, and the sleeve is a microphone. So these are commonly seen on headsets. Okay, that was a little diversion, but let me now jump back to the TRS connector. Remember that I mentioned that the DIN MIDI port only uses three of the pins, one of them for ground, one of them for current source, one of them for current sync. Well, this also has three connections, three conductors in the wire, and therefore we could send the same signals over this, and people do. So TRS MIDI ports are sending the three, or connecting the three connections that would be connected in the DIN port to these. The unfortunate thing is that they've done this in two different ways. Uh, in fact, there are three, but two common ones. One of them puts the current source on the tip and the current sink on the ring. The other one puts the current source on the ring and the current sink on the tip. So in other words, they are the opposite sense. They both place the ground on the sleeve. So what this means is if you are to connect from a device directly through these TRS ports from the MIDI TRS in of one to the MIDI TRS out of another, if they use different standards for the way that they've wired their ports up, then they will not be able to communicate with one another because you will be connecting the current source to the current source and the current sync to the current sync. There is an LD, uh, LED in the optocoupler, so if you connect the current source and sync backwards, LEDs are diodes, they only accept current flow in one direction. So if you try and send it in the other direction, nothing is going to happen. So, these are the type of connections. They transmit the same digital serial protocol in all of those cases. There's nothing special about it, it's the same electrically. It's just a different shape of port. Notice I didn't mention through for the TRS case because I've not seen a sync that has a three and a half millimeter TRS MIDI through port. I'm sure they exist. So let's move on from these digital ports to analog ports. So there are two main types of analog sync ports that you will see on a device. Remember that I said MIDI is capable of conveying things such as notes on, notes off, CC or control changes, program changes. These other port types, these analog port types, they do not transmit anything of that sort. All they transmit is synchronization 
information. So there are two main types. By far the most common now are these three and a half millimeter jack types, maybe an input and an output. But first I'll talk about what's called DINSYNC. DINSYNC is an older standard. It uses exactly the same connector as MIDI, but unlike MIDI, which is a digital protocol, DINSYNC is an analog protocol and it actually uses all five of the pins. One of them is ground. The other one is a clock signal, which I will explain. One of them is a start stop gate. One of them is a reset signal and one of them is fill, which indicates to a device it should be playing a fill. So say it was a drum machine, it would do that. The other type of connector, the three and a half millimeter connector, they tend to either accept a TS connector so in other words, only tip and sleeve. In other words, only one signal is being transmitted between the ground and the tip. If this is the case, they will only send clock in the same sense as DINSYNC sends clock. I'll explain what this sync signal looks like. Sometimes they have a TRS connector. In that case, often the tip is sending sync the ring is sending start stop or a gate when the clock should be running and sleeve so is ground so i think i've described all the types of connector and hopefully you realize then that just because the port looks the same you can't connect them together you cannot plug din sync into midi you cannot plug trs midi into an analog in. They are simply fundamentally different types of protocol. So what exactly gets transmitted? Well, let's jump back to MIDI. MIDI has a standardized way of transmitting synchronization. In fact, there are two standards, but pretty much one of them is used almost exclusively. That's called MIDI beat clock. So the way synchronization is usually carried out is a pulse, a trigger, is sent on a periodic basis. And that periodic basis is based on a subdivision of musical time. So when we talk about musical time, we think of a tempo in BPM. BPM means quarter notes per minute. So when we talk about sync, we usually talk about pulses per quarter note. In other words, how many of these beats are sent to indicate the passage of one quarter note of musical time. So in MIDI, these are called MIDI beat clock messages. And the by far the most common standard is 24 pulses per quarter note. So in other words, 24 MIDI beat messages are sent spread uniformly in time over the time it takes at your tempo for one quarter note to pass. The other standard, which is very rarely used, is 48 pulses per quarter note. You may ask why 24, why 48? Well, 24 is used because it's divisible by three and it's divisible by two, so it's easy to break it down by clock division to decide, oh, I actually only want quarter notes, so I divide it by 24. I want triplets, I can divide it by three. So MIDI is transmitting at some known rate that corresponds to the passage of musical time. Additionally, MIDI has what are called transport messages, which indicate when the sequence should start playing, and usually when the sequence should reset. So what does this mean? Well, it means in MIDI, when I hit play on one device, it can transmit a message which tells all the connected sequences that they should also start playing. And they will also start interpreting the MIDI clock that's being transmitted. So it allows for synchronization of the one musically and for synchronization of the tempo. So that's MIDI. What about the other protocols, the other port types? Well, DINSYNC actually was the predecessor to MIDI, and MIDI adopted the clock rates used by DIN. 
So even though DIN is an analog protocol, that's to say it's not digital messages that are passing. The clock pin sends a voltage spike to indicate the passage of time. And the rising edge of that voltage spike indicates one tick of the clock has occurred. And the two main um, rates that they sent for DIN sync are 24 pulses per quarter note or 48 pulses per quarter note. So it's relatively standardized and often it would say above the port. So it might say DIN 24, it might say DIN 48. It might not say and you'd have to look in the manual. But DIN, as I mentioned, has this concept of a gate signal that gets transmitted to indicate that time is supposed to be passing. It also has a pin which accepts a trigger to say reset the clock. So in the same way as MIDI can convey transport messages to say restart your sequencer, this is the tempo, the same is true of DINSYNC. So DINSYNC has that capacity. What about these um, other port types, these three and a half millimeter port types? Well, firstly, if all we have is a, is a TS type of connector, we can only transmit one piece of information because we're transmitting a signal and then this is the ground. So when your ports are only taking TS signals or your cable is only TS, all you are transmitting is sync. So there is no sense in which you indicate when the sequence should have started playing. So when this happens, it means that the devices will run at the same tempo, modulo what I'm going to describe, but there is nothing to start them at the same time. So what that means is you have to hit play on the device being synced at exactly the same time or when the one comes round of the device that is transmitting or conveying the sync. If you have a device which is using TRS connections, so tip ring sleeve, usually the ring is transmitting something to indicate the sequence should start now. So if you have TRS, you can control the transport of the downstream devices as well. So you'll note that I mentioned that there are two different standards for DIN sync, for example, 24 pulses per quarter note, 48 pulses per quarter note. What would happen if I plug the cable from a 24 pulse per quarter note device into a 48 pulse per quarter note device? Well, what would happen is one of the devices will move forwards one quarter beat every 48 pulses. The device sending it will have gone through two quarter notes in that time. So the 48 pulse per quarter note device will be running at half the effective musical time of the 24 pulse per quarter note device. This is usually not what you want. So there needs to be consensus and specifically the transmitting device has an intent about the rate that time is moving based on how it divides quarter notes. The receiving device has an understanding that that has a certain meaning, but this isn't standardized. So let's talk about these three and a half millimeter ports. Certain devices will be transmitting 24 pulses per quarter note. This is compatible with DIN sync, so you could have a passive analog converter to make it DIN sync compatible, going from TRS to DIN sync at 24 pulses per quarter note. However, it's surprisingly not that common a uh, rate of sync to use. Specifically, a lot of small synthesizers use much lower rates to transmit sync. So one of those common rates is two pulses per quarter note. So two pulses per quarter note, as in one pulse per eighth, so in other words, for every eighth beat, one pulse will be transmitted. So if I was to connect a two pulse per quarter note device to a 24 pulse per quarter note device, the clock would be running at one twelfth the rate if I was going from the two 
into the 24. If I was going from the 24 pulse per quarter note device out into the two pulse per quarter note, it would be running 12 times too fast. So in other words, we have to configure the devices to have the same clock rates. In other words, the transmitter and receiver should have the same understanding of how quickly musical time is passing. The other standard that you sometimes see is called one pulse per step. What that means is when a device has a sequencer, one pulse means move to the next step in the sequencer. In a lot of cases, that actually means one pulse per sixteenth note or four pulses per quarter note, but that's not what it's actually intended to convey. It's intended to convey every time I tick, you move to the next step. But unless the receiving device knows that, it can't follow suit. The pulses per quarter note division also allows for the concept of clock division quite easily. So for example, on the Korg Volkers, some of them you can say, I want you to move through my sequence at a quarter the rate. So the sending device is transmitting at two pulses per quarter note. The receiving device is receiving messages at two pulses per quarter note. But what it does is instead of advancing the sequencer every or twice per every pulse that's received, it waits to receive two pulses before advancing one step. So that is called clock division. And that allows for a sequencer on one device to run at a slower rate to the sequence on the other device. Other things to think about. What I've been talking about when I talk about analog sync, almost always it uses a thing called a V-trig. So what a V-trig means is we have the ground. Oh, this is a TS connector. This is the ground. This is the voltage. The ground is our zero volt reference. So what happens to the tip here is that it will jump to five volts and drop back down. 5 volts is quite a common, it could be 8 volts, it could be something else. But the voltage will be 0, spike, 0, spike. The rising edge of that spike indicates that a tick has occurred. This is called V-trig, as in voltage is conveying the message across. There is another standard used by mostly much older devices. It's also used on the Korg MS-20. It's called S-Trig. Um, so S-Trig is slightly different. The reason why V-Trig or Voltage Trig wasn't used is because Voltage Trig, in order to send a trigger, you need a voltage. In other words, the device transmitting the trigger has to be powered. S-Trig is different. S-Trig has an open circuit between the sleeve and the tip and a switch is to be placed in there. And when the device transmitting the clock wants to send a trigger, it's closing a switch effectively. I mean, this is done electronically, but that's logically what's happening. And you can do it physically with a switch. So for example, a piano style damper pedal can be used. You press the pedal, a trigger occurs. So it becomes very easy to create manual triggers. Remember that clock in this sense is nothing more than a series of trigger events, which in the modular world might be used to trigger drum beats. Okay, so I think this turned out to be a much longer presentation than I had intended, but hopefully I've conveyed in some detail what type of ports for synchronization, that's MIDI, that's analog sync, that's DIN sync, you might see. The type of data that is transmitted over those and the rel relative com um, compatibility for just plugging them into one another. And finally, hopefully, I've conveyed something of the different syncing standards and why some complexity can occur and some confusion can occur. So...
I hope this video has proven useful to you. I hope you'll join me for some more videos. But in any case, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and goodbye.